and here we are. Welcome back to the Richard Software Podcast, where we never sit out, except for this past week because it's 4th of July. But I am your host, Matthew Dawson, and I'm here joined today again by none other than co-host and brother, Chris Dawson. What's going on? I am fantastic. I'm excited, ready to be back. Had a great weekend. Shout out Joey Chestnut, hero. Not only did he save the hot dog contest, but he defended his title. But guess what? We are 51 days away from college football. Week zero starts August 26th. Do not worry. College football is back. We got media days coming this month. We got conference breakdowns coming from us this month. We got fall camp starting at August 1st. I mean, oh, we love it. The dog days of June are over. We're into July. Recruiting is getting really hot right now. We'll talk about that too. And we are going to start, you know, before you know it, we're right in the the season. Yeah, it's literally July. I mean, if you want exact numbers, 58 days, 17 hours, 38 minutes, and zero seconds until college football starts in the FBS level. I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. Getting some of my, finally getting my conference uh, previews kind of all sorted out. I've been looking at a lot of over-under win totals. There's a lot of really good lines. Vegas has done a very good job this offseason, I believe. It's very tough to tell, you know. And also, too, like power ratings. Like, if you're going off power ratings as well, or you're making your own, like, it's they're not, they're not the end all be all. They're not. They're not. It, it's so different. Like, you, you got to look at, there's so many factors. Like, you can look at, sure, like, it, returning production right is like a big one that has a large uh, correlation to success in a season but like i don't know you look at a team like you look at a team like notre dame i don't know who like sure they lost week zero by the way play week zero in dublin ireland they do navy the midshipmen right And, and they lost a lot of offensive production right because they had a tight end drafted right and their receivers are gone but they they acquired like like so I think that I don't know it's it's always a poop shoot but anyways let's get started shall we how about let's talk about recruiting what's going on Fourth of July is always a huge recruiting weekend because well, you know all, you say always the past two years yes last year and this year it, yes, but now yes. it is a staple it is a staple that's what now. that's what I'm saying you cannot put your phone away for the weekend yes yes you enjoy it whatever you know have a good time but college football. You're gonna you're gonna pick your phone back up on July 5th, and you're gonna be like, "What just happened?" And that's what happened this past weekend. It started off with Justin Scott. Now we're we haven't been here for a week, so we're gonna, it might be a little bit old. But Justin Scott from Illinois going to Ohio State was a shocker. It was crazy. Everyone thought Miami or Notre Dame. That was the battle. That was the rumor. And Ohio State pulled them out, and now they're looking to to add to that class with, I believe, Colin Simmons. Right. And uh, or no, I'm sorry, Dylan Stewart. I'm sorry. Dylan Stewart's the edge that they're after. But so they're, they're going to be looking to really, heat, really, really heat up right now. They're already having a nice class. They're second in the country right now with 18 commits, four or five stars, 12, thir- 12, four stars. Um, but yeah, you want to say that much, Justin Scott or just. Well, I think Ohio State and Georgia at this point, like they're both on pace to have a better class than the 2021 A&M class. Oh, sorry, 2022. They're yeah, both Georgia's on already pace. over 300. But yeah. the thing is, they only have 20. They already have 23 commits. So, like, right. So they only they, have room for a couple more. Ohio State, on their hand, has a chance, you know, has, has a nice chance. I agree. Well, and all these ratings aren't finalized either. So ratings could change also as well. That's true. But yeah. Well, uh, but speaking of Justin Scott, though, he went to St. Ignatius which is in the city and uh, of Chicago. And he, they played Deerfield, which is the school that both of us went to this past uh, season in the playoffs. And they just could not block him. Of course. I mean, he's a five-star. I mean, yeah, we played against Riley Mills, who was a five-star. Who was at well, five-star and like rivals or like whatever. Yeah. So, sure, like yeah. some places. High four star. He was a high four star. Player. They're all the same. Right? It's, it, that, that's, it's not a huge difference. Um. But Justin Scott was a man among his boys. He could tell, and he dominated. And he'll do that in Ohio State, too. Uh, we'll move on. Cam Coleman, you got to be excited about this. Big weekend 
big month of June continues into July for Texas A&M. Yep, yep. You see him going crazy in the background there. Five-star wide receiver from Alabama. Auburn was the team to beat. Clemson thought they did a good job too. Now they have four four-star higher wide receivers committed in the class. They got another athlete on the way to their trending board who might play defense. We don't know yet. But another just more athletic guys. That's what you need. And then that's what and then these playmakers. It looks like they're getting them in this class. I want you Auburn fans on the message boards to cry about it. Go cry about it. All I see on these message boards is, oh, guess he got the bag. Guess he got the bag. Okay. If you want to look at me in the eyes and tell me that the 2022 class was bought, I might believe you. Okay. But, but in this instance, bu- every class is bought. I'm every sorry. class is bought. I'm sorry. But in like, let's, let's analyze this. All right. Cam Coleman, AM was the first team to offer him. They were the first team to offer him. Guess what? He has family in Bryan College Station. Okay. They have a fantastic receiving core where freshmen, true freshmen, had immediate impacts on the team, and they saw Three that. Them. Three, Three of them, them had immediate impacts on that team, and I think you saw that and said, you know what? Let's go, and let's let's not kid ourselves. There are four wide receivers on that roster that are going to get drafted to NFL teams, okay? Yeah, sure, Jimbo's only had two receivers drafted in, like, the last however many years. Calvin it doesn't Benjamin. matter. <laughs> Calvin, yeah. It doesn't matter right now. It, what matters is that they have talent on this team and they're going to look good throwing the ball. And you know what? Bobby Petrino's a plus. I, Hugh Freeze is a great coach to play for if you're an offensive player. Obviously, like I wouldn't blame Cam Coleman for going there. But to say that it was just NIL is is blasphemous. So if you're on the message boards, not just as an Auburn fan, and you just start, don't go crying. Don't go crying if you don't get a recruit. All right, just come on. What don't slander the kid. Don't drag him to the mud. And secondly, if you're upset that AM allegedly outbid you, fucking open up your own checkbook and write something to your your collective, okay? Yes. Do something about it. Yes. If you're crying about it, oh, it's an NIL. No, whip out your checkbook and make sure he comes to, to Auburn or Clemson or whoever it was, right? Yep. You okay. better believe I'm part of the 12th Man Foundation. You better <laughs> oh. believe it. Guess who is leaving their mark? They love, they love your little monthly subscription. Don't they? they love my monthly subscription. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. This is Florida State we're talking about now. They had three commits, uh, defensive lineman, D.D. Holmes, Elijah Moore, wide receiver. Not that Elijah Moore, different one in high school, four-star wide receiver. And then Ricky Knight, uh, four-star athlete for them. Kansas, a team we don't talk about a ton recruiting-wise. Um. They just got a four-star edge from Katy, Texas. That's a big deal. They have three talent four breeding, stars. Talent breeding town, by the way. Yep. Three four-stars in the past three weeks. Or Yes, three four-stars past three weeks. And typically a team that doesn't recruit that well. Um, they got them going over there. After a successful season, they're capitalizing on it. I love that for Kansas. You know their collective is good because they, they do it for basketball. They're very successful in their NIL on basketball. So you know it should be able to translate for that uh, football too. So that's good to see Vanderbilt, another team we don't talk about a ton recruiting wise. They got a nice kid, a very freaky, very bendy and twitchy, a three star edge. Listen to these dimensions here: six foot five, two hundred pounds. He's probably up to two ten by now, but he's awesome. This is Mason Carter I'm talking about. Minnesota was actually the first team on him, uh, first Power Five team on him. They wanted him bad. And they kind of waited to offer because they didn't see him live in person yet. And then they offered, and then everyone else blew up with him too. Uh, but yeah, Vandy, I'm getting them after a nice official visit. They went there. They have, what, they have Will Muschamp's kid. That's that's awesome. Yeah, Whit Muschamp. Whit Much, Whit? Much Whit, His name is Whit Muschamp. He's a gunslinger. Watch out. He's, quarterback? Wow. He's gonna be quarterback. He's a quarterback. Watch out, SEC. You know what's crazy is that his dad, if he stays at Georgia, right? He's still a D coordinator at Georgia, right? Yep. If he stays there, he'd be coaching against his kid, <laughs> which would be hilarious. He would pummel his kid for he would literally quarter. I mean, oh my god, what do you do? That's such a conflict of interest, but we're not here to talk about that. But continue. All right. Then moving on to UCF, a popular team for us. If you've been following us, you know we love our UCF recruiting right now. Um, especially coming up from G5 to Power 5, they are taking advantage of that. And again, we talked about it last episode with Kylan Fox, right? The four-star athletes probably can play tight end for him. Um, Quay Bur- 
Quab Quay Birdsong. He's a linebacker. The decommitted from Cincinnati, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. He's coming to UCF. And then the interior offensive linemen all committed this weekend. They have historic success there. They have three of their top 10 highest rated recruits ever committed in this class. You'd love to see that. And they're, they're not done yet for sure. Uh, Georgia got a nice offensive tackle, I believe, yesterday. Uh, maybe two days from now by the time this is uploaded on Wednesday, uh, July 6th or July 5th. But they also have Demarcus Riddick, who is on flip watch. Bama is really trying for them right now. But then today or yesterday, Thursday, July 6th, the big news was Elijah rushing. Edge, staying home, going going to Arizona over Oregon. That was a huge deal. That kind of came in a couple days ago. That you started hearing, okay, Arizona's trending, Arizona's trending. And everyone's like, what? Everyone's freaking out on the Oregon side. They're berating this poor kid. For 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 staying to stay staying home to help build his his hometown school instead of going to Oregon, but I think that's awesome. I mean, that's the highest recruit they've ever gotten in that class. Um, so I love seeing that. Like when five stars kind of make their own paths and whatnot. Like Ed Oliver did that a couple years ago with with Houston, and uh, he does it here with Elijah Rushing. Yeah, I mean, you love the hometown here. I mean, like the regionality of college football. You can argue with this about me, or you can argue about this with me. That's what makes the sport great, is the regionality of the oh, sport. That's what makes yeah. it so amazing. That's why we're that's sitting here ridiculous. today. That's why I'm that's why we're so passionate about like every like these fan bases. I mean, everything is everything real or everything ultimately comes down to regionality, college football, and fandom. And if he's staying home in Tucson, I mean, you gotta talk. That's a guy that people are gonna be rooting for over. That's a guy that I'm rooting for. I immediately am not rooting for Elijah Rushing. I hope that that kid is a star. And, and Arizona and success in the program. I mean, it was great to see Ed Oliver commit there, right? First five-star to commit to a G5 school it was Houston, right, back then. And then he was drafted in the first round still, like top 10 player. Like, it was awesome to see that, that you can go anywhere. And if you're a stud, the NFL will find you. The money will find you. And so I think that's awesome. Yeah, and that, that's, I believe, their first – Five star in that program's history. Fine, correct Just about that. Talk about a lot of meat left on the bone in that state. Arizona pumps out talent all the time. Yeah. and look at Jed Fish and people. Like when he got hired, people were pissed. People were pissed when he got hired. People thought that they were just flushing money down the toilet. I mean, they fired someone. They what was it, like seven and a half million buyout. It was Kevin Sumlin, wasn't it? Yeah, Sumlin. They bought him out for like seven and a half mil, and then they brought in this guy Jed Fish, who like no one had heard of. And look at him now. Look at him go. Look at him go. That's all I'm gonna say. You people make fun of Jimbo Fisher for riding the coattails of Jameis Winston. Johnny Manziel. Uh, Kevin Sumlin owes a big thank you to Johnny Manziel. I mean, he's ridden his coattails. He did it for ten years. He rode his coattails for almost ten years. And made a lot of money for it. Okay, anyways, crystal ball time now. These are players that have not committed yet, but are trending to these schools. Start off with Brian Huff. He's committing on July 12th. Look for him to go to Missouri. He's a four-star linebacker from Arkansas. Nick Marsh. Here's a top 100 player from the state of Michigan. Looks like he's going to Michigan State. Uh, Penn State and Kansas is also in there. But every, every all signs are pointing to Nick Marsh right now. Uh, Jacob Gidd. Is committing July sixth, which was today. Did he? He ended up at uh. Did he? He didn't. He didn't. He hasn't committed yet, though. I'm so sorry. Anyways, Wardell Mack, Matthew, can you check on that for me real quick? Yep. That's uh, Jacob Gill. Uh, yeah. Oh, Wardell Mack. Uh, he committed to UCF. Another big time. Yep. There we go. Four star safety from Georgia. I mean, look at this offer list: Bama, Florida, OSU, Oregon, big time, big time schools wanted him. Now Wardell Mack, four star corner from Louisiana, looking trending towards Texas, and then Clemson looking to add three more players to their roster: four, three four stars, two offensive tackles, and a safety. Um, so yeah, we actually did this. We prepped yesterday, but uh, some bad storms happened in our area. Uh, so the power went out and it was out for a, a good bit. So we ended up not even being able to record last night, but yeah. Thank you for the autocorrect there. Yeah, it's all good. He's at UCF once again. 
recruiting at Golden a pretty Knights. high level for their standards. Sleeping Giant. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about it. All right. Thanks for recruiting updates. It's awesome as usual. Let's talk San Diego State. So we know that San Diego State, okay, initially sent a letter to the Mountain West. And I'll read you this. I'll read you this letter. Okay. And then we'll talk about more of what's going on in hindsight now. So Adela De La Torre, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, is the president of San Diego State. And they wrote this letter to the Mountain West. Here it is. Listen to this and uh, see what see what we get from this. Dear Mountain West Conference and all members, as shared with Commissioner Navarez at her June 2023 Board of Directors meeting, this letter is to formally notice that San Diego State University intends to resign from the Mountain West Conference, effective June 30th, 2024, or at an agreed upon later date. It has been an absolute joy to collaborate and compete with each member of the universities, each of the member universities. In order to exit as efficiently and fairly as possible, I would like to respectfully make the following request for your consideration. Now, then she goes into discuss notice requirement, right? Like, uh, typically, uh, it, the Mount West requires notification by June 30th of the year before, right? So they had till June 30th to basically re- renege their, or basically take back their uh, intention to resign from the Mountain West Conference. Um, and then two, to discuss exit fee was their thing because what they wanted was because of the, and I quote, with full consideration of the value added from our recent participation in the NCAA Division I basketball championship game, unit revenue from which will continue to come to the Mountain West Conference even after an SDSU exit and which our athletics director is prepared to discuss in detail um, with regard to the timing of the payment, such that a four-year installment period may be considered. So they basically want to get extra money after they leave from the Mountain West. So they still want to get paid by the Mountain West after they leave because of the added value that that national championship game had on the Mountain West, I guess. So pretty ridiculous, um, if you ask me. I mean, it's not ridiculous because they did add value to the Mountain West, but pretty ridiculous asking a conference for that after you're leaving. So all that happens... And- well, all that happens, right? And then we talked about, oh, are they going to the Pac-12? Are they going to the Big 12, right? Like, that, that was a discussion. Pac-12 seems a little shaky. They don't have their media rights figured out at all. They're going to go to streaming services. I'm telling you that right now. They're going to go to streaming services, and they're going to blow up. Yeah. I, if I'm if I'm San Diego State, I look, I, I, to me, I think they seem like a Big 12 team to me. What's interesting about, wanting to get paid for the national championship. And it makes sense because if you're a college basketball fan, you know that Mountain West typically struggles. They have historically struggled in the tournament, right? They lost like however many straight. They never won, never went to the Sweet 16 or whatever. They never gone to the Elite. They never won a Sweet 16 game. That's what it was. Yep. So um, what they did is adding every game you play in the NCAA tournament, you get a a fee, and the conference also gets a big time cutback from the TV providers or from the NCAA, or whoever it comes from. So what they did by playing in however many games, they made a shit ton of money for themselves, but also from the Mountain West, more specifically the Mountain West, which was then divided by all these other teams too. So they feel like they need to get some of their that cut too, which is which is fair enough, and they're trying to capitalize on, um the success they've had on the basketball team. And then also like with all this conference realignment in football going on um, with the, the power five schools and even the, the G five schools with, with the USA. But I, I don't know. I, I, I like the team in the big 12 because I think they're worthy of a power five uh, school. I think I, with their funding, that'd be very fun. I love San Diego in general. I mean, it's a beautiful town. I feel like it's a football town after, you know, the chargers left and went to LA um, I feel like they deserve some goodness to, to go to them, but we'll see. Yeah, well, so they're, we won't get into this, but there's smoke for Colorado and Arizona to maybe go to the Big 12, right? Which, like, it's another confusing thing. Like, why? So to add on to the confusion of all this, right, then San Diego State basically takes back right bef- on June 30th or June 29th, right before the deadline, they basically took back their offer to leave the Mountain West, right? 
And they said, nope, we're actually staying. Thanks, guys. But uh, I guess it didn't work. They must have had conversations with the Pac-12 and it fell through or they were scared about their media rights. They may have talked to the Big 12 and they just weren't ready to move on anything yet after they just you know, already had big realignment uh, going on there. So now the Mountain West says, oh, okay, you're coming back. Well, you owe us $17 million because that is the buyout that you owed us because you technically left. Even though they reclaimed their membership before the June 30th deadline. So that's kind of weird. Like, So in all of this, right, it feels like, one, if you're the president of the university, right, Adela de Torre, why would you put this in writing? So these lawyers, lawyers from the Mountain West can just gobble this up, right? Why would you put that on paper? Why don't you just have a conversation with them, right? You, you literally put it, this is to formally notice that SDSU intends to resign from the Mountain West Conference effective June 30th, 2024. Whoa. So it's like, so yeah, so now there's just going to be this whole bicker banter kind of lawsuit going on. So instead of like making a ton of money and going to a new conference and getting paid by the Mountain West and getting a new media rights deal and being a bigger program and being in a better conference and having better chances to recruit, they get none of that. <laughs> and now the Mountain West wants to sue at San Diego State for $17 million. So it feels like San Diego State just goofed this up big time. It, they just goofed this up. And they, there's no other way to put it. I, I just feel like, I think this is just, this is on the now. What's funny is that their athletic director, John Wicker, he won like Sports Business Journal AD of the Year, right? Nice guess, job, buddy. Yeah, nice job. I guess he coached that basketball team, right? I mean, I I don't know. I guess he's Matt Bradley for some reason, also. But anyways, I, I thought I, I don't know how they vote on that award or whatever, but basically, apparently, he's a pretty decent AD. Where was he in these conversations? He must have been in these conversations because uh, De La Torre said that our athletics director is prepared to discuss in detail with regard to the payment or the timing of the payouts for the four-year installment period. That would be the rights that come from after this basketball championship game that they, I, I don't know. This is a whole mess. San Diego State deserves better is what they deserve. Well, the problem here is why the hell would you Essentially, throw yourself in the transfer portal, and then withdraw a couple of days later. It, you when you, in my opinion, when you go in the transfer portal, or in this case, when you ask to resign from Kansas, that's a big deal. That is a monumental decision that's going to affect everybody in your organization, the entire school in general, and the whole conference that you are leaving and the conference you are joining. That is a decision that has to be thought out and made final. It sounds like they just got like a rush. They're like, okay, let's do it. And let's throw it out. And if we give ourselves time to come back and come back, the problem is, is when you come back, your bonds are already broken with the conference. You definitely insulted the Mountain West and all those teams and the presidents and the commissioner of the Mountain West. It was just dumb. It was, it, And I get it that you're, you know, putting pressure on Mountain West, but whatever you thought was going to happen, absolutely backfired. And to me, there was a much better way to do it. Okay. Just like, if you're going to resign, actually resign, but also have it in writing before where you don't have to have the buyout. You don't have to pay your buyout and you can actually make money or whatever it was. So uh, I don't know that this is a, a fundamental mistake from the organization of the athletic department of San Diego state. Yeah. It, and it makes no, like these other teams, when we saw them realigned, right. They didn't leave their comp. They had deals. They, they already knew what conferences they were going to, right? And by resigning, they thought, oh, we have leverage now. Either the Mountain West gives us a bigger deal or a higher share of their revenue, or we're going to land in this other new conference, assuming that they were going to get into another conference. They, they, It feels like they must not have even been in talks with the Pac-12 or the Big 12, because otherwise, how did this deal not get done? How did it not get done? What's crazy, and you saw how how quickly it all happened with Texas and OU moving to the SEC. I, there were rumbling, sure, but let me tell you, when that came official, the I believe it was Pate that said this, right? That the commissioner of the Big 12 did not even know. It was breaking news to him when it broke, right? It was kept so under wraps. And so the thing is, is like, 
You see programs like that do it. You see UCLA and you see F- UC- USC do it. You see teams from the AAC move to your to the big the Big Twelve. There was a blueprint laid out for you exactly how to do it. Where you're it, you're in closed door meetings, you're figuring it out, and once it's all finished, then you actually make it public. And what's crazy is like they just did not, and they they thought maybe you know they'd put pressure on the conference to be able to you know, force their hand. Um. But obviously, no, it did not work. Yeah, and it's like th- this is a school that wants to move to a bigger conference and get paid more money, right? Because they want people to take them seriously, and they should. It's it's in a premier location. It's a solid school academics wise. It, they have good programs, right? Even though they're in the Mountain West, they have good programs. But I can't take this administration seriously now after this. I I can't. I can't do it. I don't want this administration in my conference. Now, when they come to my conference, no. But I, but just, it's just crazy. Even like the Pac-12, even though they don't have their media rights figured out, it's got to be better than the the Mountain West. It has to be. There's no the, way the, it's not. The only problem, the only caution you have with going to the Pac-12 is you have no idea what the conference is going to look like in five years, let alone maybe two years. You have no idea what's going to happen. So to me, I think the safe play is the Big 12. I, I think the Big 12 had a nice TV deal. They they kind of, to me, they have some long-term stability. So that's where I would move to. And you have the Big 12 with the added interest of moving out into California. You'd be only you'd be the most far out West team in, in the Big 12. But the Big 12, you want to talk about a wide landscape. It's almost like it becomes the Big 12, the Big 10 of the South, where you you go from coast to coast. You're you're at at San Diego, but you're also all along you know Central America, the border, and then down into UCF, into Florida too. So, to me, that that it's just again regionality of college football matters. But with conference realignment, you're gonna lose out with that some. So overall, the takeaway is this whole thing is dumb. We'll see how it unfolds. <laughs> uh, call, call me and call me in a year. <laughs> Yeah, call us in a year. Obviously, we care, but this seems this whole thing seems dumb. So, anyways, ESPN. Yeah, we lost folk. Oh, we lost some folk at ESPN. I mean, to name a few: Todd McShay, right? Max Kellerman, meh, <laughs> right? <laughs> Susie Colbert. I mean, NFL guys, Matt Hasselbeck, Ryan, Rob Ninkovich, Steve Young, Keyshawn, Je- or Keyshawn Johnson. I mean, we, you lost a lot of guys. These are all football guys, too. Well, Max Kellerman is kind of everything. He's Iguodala, right? But the biggest one where I think I'm, I know you agree with me, the big, they goofed up. David Pollock, are you serious? W- why? Why? He was incredible. I, I get it. Okay, maybe you have plans for Pat McAfee to take over college game day, but there's get rid of Desmond Howard. I'm sorry. Yeah, what Don't are we doing? Like David pa- David Pollock's gonna go to Fox and or CBS or wherever, and he's gonna be incredible. It, like he's been at ESPN for a while now. He actually knows the game. He's very sensible. He's very funny on TV. He's a great personality. The, he's got good chemistry with all those guys. He's an SEC guy. Um, I, I, that, that really, really was surprising. And I yeah, get, that was a very surprising else. move. Even Todd McShay, I get it. You know, you don't really need two draft experts. I, it's fun when they debate, dot, 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 whatever. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, kind of an idiot. Jalen Rose, kind of an idiot. Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah. That's kind of a tough loss. Uh, um, NBA guys. Colbert is actually good. Susie Matt Colbert was fantastic. She does not yeah. get enough credit. She's yeah. awesome on the sidelines. She's awesome. So I was, yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked. The, the one that kills me is Neil Effort, the anchor of Sports Center for what a decade, two decades. I mean, he, you grew up on that guy. Neil, he was awesome. He is just awesome. And the fact that he had to leave right after so long, it's kind of a shame. Um, yeah. So it's like, I, what's confusing to me though is like, you know, everyone's saying like, "Oh, they're making room for Pat McAfee because of that contract." I don't know, man. Like, they're not. This is a. This was in. This is a months, Disney months kind of ago. thing. I think this is a Disney thing. I, I something's going on in that organization. I don't know what it is, but well, yeah, it's not good. Doing great. Uh, in I because 
to be honest, there's the the thing is with today is you have so many options, right? You have a podcast like this one. Remember to like and subscribe if you're new. We love that. But you have podcasts where you can have anyone you want talking. So you can find your own things. You have YouTube, which is a big deal too, especially in college football or in, in, in sports in general. You can find so many different podcasts or whatever it is. And then you also have streaming services, but you also have Fox and CBS and, you know, NBC for a day or two. Like it's, there's a lot of different sources for all your media. And to be honest, ever since everyone else started getting better, to be honest, ESPN got worse. They got worse. They dug themselves in a hole with the debate, 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 debate format. And it has not paid out in my opinion. That's why Max Kellerman's gone. Yeah. I think people are smarter. I think people are smarter and they want more. They want more analysis and less exactly bickering, whatever. And you know, it, it gets a lot of clicks, but retention is not there. Yeah. I, it's a shame. I hope they get their active. I'm sure all those guys will, you know, find land on their feet because they're real good. And, and I'm sure they made plenty of money. Um, but you, you hate to see people getting let off, especially when it's not necessarily their fault. It's just due to budget cuts, you know, but. Right. So. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. All right. Let's get into this. David, not... hey, David, Pollock. David Pollock. If you're not doing anything, you know, the next couple months. You want to come over to our podcast? Do you know what? If you you're free, let us know. <laughs> we'd, be talk. Glad to, we'd be glad to talk. I would love to talk SEC football with you. I would love to talk SEC football oh, yeah. with you. So, anyways, this next segment, I've not told CD what it is. I told him that he didn't need to prepare for it because it doesn't really take a lot of skill. It does. It does. But this segment is called Guess That Line. Wow. So we're in July. A lot of lines. Oh, the college line. Football. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. A lot of lines are out for college football. Um, I mean, I'll give you the first one, right? But the, the goal of the game basically is to guess that line, right? The first one being Florida at Utah, Thursday, August 31st. So the only rule is tell me what tell me what team is favored. Tell me how many they're favored by, and then I'll give you the answer. There's no point system or anything. This is just kind of to get people thinking about these games coming up, get people excited. And I also am curious to see where your head's – there's no chance you're getting more than two of these right. <laughs> I'm just going to say there's no chance you're getting more than two of these right <laughs> because it's tough to guess the exact numbers. So it's not an indictment on CD if he doesn't get some of these because you guys sitting at home, I guarantee you, you're not going to get any of these. Unless you've looked at some of them. So, Florida at Utah, Thursday, August 31st. What is that line? No, I've seen so many power ratings that are just way, way, way too high on Florida. But I understand that's where the betting market comes from, is, is a power rating or ranking, whatever. Um, or power rating. Wow. Give me Utah minus two and a half. Wow. I'm pulling these from DraftKings, by the way. So for anyone that's like, oh, you're wrong. It's actually this. I'm looking at DraftKings, okay, on Thursday, July 6th. All right, let's relax. Utah, at home, is actually favored by nine. Can you believe that? That's a good line. That's a way better line. I was th- I was thinking the power ratings were stupid. A nine, and I still might take Utah to cover. Yeah, that I think that's a great line as well. I think that's a great line. Uh. Definitely different than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be closer, like within a touchdown. I thought just because, but hey, it's in it's in it's in Utah. So, all right, here's one that you should know. I shouldn't say you should know it. But I should I should know it. Nebraska at Minnesota Thursday, August thirty first. At Minnesota, will, how much is Minnesota I'll, favored by? I just gave you that. You, I'll be there, right? Minnesota's got to be. Let's go four and a half. It is seven and a half. They're giving us a touchdown in the hook. Okay. A touchdown in the hook. So that's, t- I mean, that's, I kind of would have had that line at like a touchdown, I think. But by the way, well, yeah, I, I mean, by the way, the last time Nebraska came into Minnesota, they were favored. They were favored against Minnesota. Minnesota won eight games that year. 
Nebraska won like four. And right. Scott Frost was fired like, you know, obviously last year, but seven and a half. You know, people are starting to respect Minnesota. The, the line that's, we'll talk about it, but we'll get to over unders. Six and a <laughs> half is criminal. Criminal. It's up to seven now. It's the most bet. It's one of the most bet bets, over under bets at college football. It's Minnesota's over. Yep. Friday, September 1st, Louisville goes to Atlanta to play Georgia Tech. What is that line? I'm going to say Louisville is probably favored, but not by much. I got to get out of the NFL spacing. And NFL lines are so close. It's been college is a lot more spaced out. Give me Louisville at five and a half. It's Louisville minus eight and a half. See, which, again, I'm too, I'm too close. I agree with that. I'm pretty high on Louisville. I think a lot of people are. Uh, I think that over-under win total has moved a lot recently as well. So, next one. Saturday, September 2nd, Virginia at Tennessee. At Tennessee. Come on. That That is a – I'll see what you guess, but – I, I want to say 22 and a half or 20, a 21 and a half, but I'm going to go with, with 17 and a half, minus 17 and a half Tennessee. Is it, 20, is it 28? It's 28. Damn it. Wow. It's 28. And I, I agree with that Virginia is one of the worst power five football teams this year. It will be. And people are high on Tennessee. So I, I understand why that is the way it is. It should be four touchdowns, right? Minnesota was favored against Colorado last year by four touchdowns. If they were favored by four touchdowns against Colorado, Tennessee should be favored by four touchdowns against Virginia. But okay. I'll say this. Colorado was the worst team in college football in general. Virginia is not the worst team in college football. No, they They're might be. The, bad, they might be the worst Power Five team. They could be. That's not, yeah, they could be. All right, here's another one: Fresno State at Purdue, that same day, Saturday, September second. I can't wait till Week One. Oh my gosh! Uh, give me Purdue. It's a G five on a seventeen and a half. Purdue or Fresno State going to Purdue. Oh, this is CD is historically low on Purdue, so I'm surprised you went that high. Purdue minus five and a half. That's it. What? And I, I love the Bulldogs. I love Fresno State, but no Jay Kaner. That's Mikey Keen. Mikey Keen is I know, all I'm gonna I say. Know. But that's crazy at Purdue. Breaking at in Purdue. Hudson Card. I might have to you know early sprinkle on that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I kind of like, I kind of like Fresno State there, but that's just me. All right. Anyways, that means neutral site. They're two and a half points. Oh, uh, just about like that's. Wow. Yep. All right. Here we go. University of South Florida at Western Kentucky, Saturday, September second. Oh, I want to say I want the Hilltoppers to be favored here. The USF is bad. USF is bad, but Western Kentucky isn't great either. But they do have our guys, Austin Reed and Malachi Corley. It's really my guys. Kind of win me my fan win, win me our, our fantasy bet. Um give me Western Kentucky minus three and a half. You're right to be on Western Kentucky. It is minus fourteen. Fourteen. It is minus fourteen. Look at the CUSA. Isn't that pretty wild? Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, but also like South Florida was so bad, dude. They were really bad. They also got well new head coach, Alex Golish. Is yeah. your OC at Tennessee. So I they were 130th in points given up per game last year defensively. They just that, not gonna, they're gonna have to outscore people this year. They gave up Golish. six and a half yards per carry. That's really bad. That's terrible. So I I get that. I think Western Kentucky's awesome. I'm I'm gonna be rooting for them this year, as always. Here's a good one. Here's a really good one that I was shocked to see, actually. Boise State at Washington, Saturday, September 2nd. I was nowhere close when I guessed this line. I like Washington a lot. And I'm pretty sure Vegas does too. But also, we, we Boyd said it's nothing to be messed with either. 
but it is at Washington. Washington minus 17 and a half. Wow, you were a lot closer than I was. It's minus 14 and a half. And I I had it under a touchdown. Now, okay. I, I realized my mistake. I think in my head, I was like, oh, it's under a touchdown, neutral side. But I'm like, at Washington, maybe it should have been like 10. I, I don't know. But just, just from eyeballing this, not looking at these teams side by side, comparing schemes, whatever. I had this under a touchdown just by guessing it. So I am I am surprised that you you got that. That was pretty good. Now again, I'm also Taylor Green's best friend. So by best friend, I mean his lover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Taylor Green. If people who were listening to the show before don't know, or who are new to the show don't know. Next game, UTSA at Houston. Saturday, September 2nd. A huge game for Houston, by the way, who has a much tougher schedule than I think a lot of people realize this year. They need yeah, to get out to a hot start. Too bad they won't. They're going to lose by two touchdowns in this game. But give me UT- UTSA minus five and a half. Wow. Could be an early sprinkle. UTSA is not favored. Houston is favored by two. Houston minus two. It's at Houston. Wow. Now Houston, they return nothing on the defensive line. They it get didn't matter. That defense line was terrible anyways last year. Two years uh, ago they terrible. were a little bit they were a little bit hurt. They're a little injured. Donovan Smith comes in there at quarterback to replace Clayton Toon. No tank Dell, but they get Matthew Golden. A couple nice transfers at receiver as well. So I don't know. Could be interesting. They also get uh what's his name? A linebacker, all big twelve linebacker transfer i don't i'm blanking i'm blank but anyways pretty good so i i don't know i that's interesting i i I think it's i think it's a really good line i think it's a really good line utsa money line let's i don't know i am going on record saying that that is a very good line because it's also kind of like like last year it was i remember uh houston texas tech Early it came out lines came out Monday morning. I looked at it. I'm like, Houston plus three. Dang. And then I <laughs> I hit it hard. And then that game, oh, that was so scary. But it ended up going to overtime. And then Tech won by two, so it was huge. It was yeah. massive. Or Tech won by no, I got it three and a half. It ended up at two and a half, and they lost by three. I think it was thirty three thirty. I think was the final score. So it was, to say the least, awesome. But yeah, so respect Houston for covering for me that week. Awesome. Here we go. South Carolina at North Carolina. Oh. This is – I think this line is wrong, but I think it's really good. I think South Carolina is favored. And I think they're favored by four. Nope. North Carolina minus one and a half. It's at North Carolina. I get it. I get that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's a really, really good line. I think yeah. If it was at South Carolina, South Carolina's favorite. Probably by more than yeah. one and a half because like at, at a neutral four. They're probably by four. Yeah, at a neutral site, South Carolina is favored. For yeah, sure. Hands down. <laughs> hands down. So that's why I think I think that's a solid, solid line. Uh here's an interesting one. West Virginia at Penn State. It's gonna be closer to that uh Tennessee Virginia line then the Boise State Washington I'm gonna go 24 and a half close no cigar minus 20 Penn State okay I I like your yeah. line I think this is a good line but I like your line better I think <laughs> yeah now again this is uh- we're saying this. Don't go to your phones and bet these games, okay? I don't have any of my information in front of me regarding either of these teams. I haven't dove into like these coaching matchups. I haven't dove into these games yet. I'm just saying we're thinking out loud here, just like initial first reactions. See, see so, where our head's at. See where your head's at right now. Do not get first. any ideas, although there is one game on here that you can get ideas because I already got ideas. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, LSU at Florida State. I think you're going to get really close to this one because I feel like you may have seen this in some places. 
but it's gonna be under a touchdown either way. It's gotta be. It's at I Florida. Don't, wait, it's a neutral site it, game, right? It's in Tampa or it's in Jacksonville. Yeah. It's it's yeah. in it's in it's Orlando. I believe it's Orlando. Yeah. Give me so I said at Florida State, but that's their the home team for what me LSU means. minus two and a half. Wow, and he nails it. And he nails it. Really? That was awesome. I, I would have guessed a similar line. I think I would have had it at like one and a half. I would have had it or maybe at a field goal. I, I might have had it at Florida State minus one and a half is what I might have done, but I am shocked that you got that. That is awesome because I agree with this line 100%. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I, I like LSU in this game, but I also like Florida State as a team. Like the, the fact that this line is the way it is also speaks loudly to Florida State and how good of a football team that this oh, could be. Yeah. But also Florida both State. Programs. How about both these programs? Last <laughs> how about, year, yeah. nobody, not that nobody gave them a chance, but everyone's kind of like, okay, we'll see about LSU still recovering. Brian Kelly, who knows in the SEC? Is Mike Norvell the guy, blah, blah, blah. And now both these teams are national championship contenders. In their respective conferences, so it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy though. Is that Florida State is the odds-on favorite to win the ACC? I don't hate that at all. Not favorite at a neutral site against LSU. Well, yeah, that's just the ACC, but that's also LSU is. But they'd be favorite against any other SEC right. team, though. Uh, right. Minus Alabama, Georgia, obviously. Monday, September fourth, Clemson travels to Duke. Typically, these that? lines, when Clemson plays like Georgia Tech or Virginia, whatever it is, week one, they usually beat them by like 40, right? Except one year they struggle, but to me, uh, Duke's better than people think. So I think Vegas knows that. Uh, how about how about 17 and a half by Clemson minus 17 and a half? It's Clemson minus 12. Really? Week one game, yeah. Now they're breaking in a new quarterback, kind of. Okay, right. No, so, K Club makes an upgrade over DJ. He but. is, but it, it, it's his first game in the well, it's his with first game with a full too. season. Yeah, with the new offense. So young guy, new offense. Here's one. Here's one that I was actually already aware of when I was researching these. But uh Texas AM at Miami. Saturday, September 9th. What do you think that line is? At Miami. Now is that home field advantage? Man. Oh. But it's it's anti Kyle Field, which is a huge deal. Yep. Miami, wow. There's no way Miami's favored. I'll tell you what it was last year. A M minus. Now this is the week after, or sorry, the week before App State. Yeah. No. The week after. Yeah, the week after. I think it was the week after. Because it, it was up in there. A M was favored by four and a half. Moved to five and a half. Give me uh you know what maybe Miami's favored by by one. Incorrect. Texas M is favored by six and a half, which I agree with one hundred percent. I think it should be I, at least a touchdown. I, I'm not gonna bet that game. I can tell you that. No, I won't be either. But that that is a AM's a team I won't bet at all unless it's live betting punt. <laughs> <laughs> if their offense is terrible. Look, the Power Rangers are going to love AM because they're just a more talented team. Uber talented. Right. So I agree with this line. I'm not saying I'm, like you said, I'm not saying I wouldn't touch it. Just because I think it would be like, just because I think it, it should be seven and a half doesn't mean that I sh- am going to be irresponsible. No. So, right. anyways, next game Texas at Alabama. Ooh. Alabama's going to be favored, and they're at home. Alabama's such a weird team with their lines because they are just – what if what if it's nine and a half? Bama by nine and a half. Close. Bama by seven, by touchdown. Okay. They didn't, okay. That's very um, that's small a, a, for – Again, a really good line. Uh, that's a good line. But on the road at home, Bama out of conference game at home. Yeah, which People is pretty wild. Texas, man. People you don't see – when was the last time you saw – maybe when they played Florida State in the opener? When was the last yeah, time you saw Alabama, that, that a touchdown favorite, only a touchdown favorite at home to open the – well, it's not to open the season, but 
This is you know, the week after. A conference game. Probably back in Virginia Tech when they played them in 2009. A long, yeah, long time top, ago. Top 10 matchup. Yeah. It's like number six versus number 10. Yeah. Only remember that because of NCAA football 10. Great game. Great game. All right. Uh, last one I'm going to go through here. <laughs> and I'm only going through it because I have sprinky sprinkied on it already. And we are, what? More than two months away from this game. Saturday, September 16th, Washington at Michigan State. Whatever the line is, I'm assuming you're pounding Washington, which means the line's probably low, lower than it should be. I'll tell you, it's it's under two touchdowns. I'll tell you this. It's already moved. Okay, it was probably at minus 13.5, and and it's probably up to 14.5. Close. Pretty close. It is at Washington minus 12. I got it at minus 11. That's ridiculous. That's so yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, can... and I'm I'm thinking by the time that week rolls around. Now, Washington has a very, very, very tough schedule. All right? Like like a very tough schedule. Or oh, Boise State week one. Yeah. How about Boise State, Tulsa, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan State. So, like – you're thinking that they're going to win week one, weeks one and two, and they'll be tuned up for week three. Um, yeah. Last it's not, year, it's not a look-ahead is... game. It's not a look-ahead game either because you're playing Cal next week and then Arizona the week after that. So you open up. Washington should start 5-0, and but then they go. Then they start getting into it. Oregon, Arizona State, Stanford. Then USC, Utah, Oregon State, Washington State to end the season. Yikes. The Pac-12 North is awesome. Right. Yeah. So I, I – I mean, watch it's gonna, it's gonna be just like last year. So, and I'm already on it. We'll be talking about that when that comes up that week for that Monday. What'll that be? The, the 11th. It'll be 9/11. We're talking about this. Actually, we'll be talking about it the Thursday before. So we'll be talking about it the 14th. Yeah. And this line will have moved. Yeah. Since then, by a large margin, mark it down. <laughs> mark get it, down. it now. So get it I mean, now, if, and then get it again. Whatever it's at. <laughs> yeah. That so if there are irresponsible people out there, um, first of all, do your own due diligence. You can listen to me. I've done my due diligence, but and you can trust me in my due diligence. But do your own due diligence, and I do want you to look at these two teams, and then and then get back to me. Maybe email me at uh the redshirt sophomore at gmail.com. Or maybe come after me on Twitter at the redshirt soft. So but anyways, that's all we have for today. Uh there's a couple more games that we could have talked about, but maybe we'll save those for another time. There's a lot of lines that we can get after in the future. So thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, email us at the rest of your sophomore gmail.com. We love those. You've, you've heard our mailbag episodes. We love questions and all of them have been good so far. So big fan. Also follow us on Twitter at the Richard soft. That's just the Richard soft. We love interacting on Twitter. We're there all the time. Um, you would have cost, even though we weren't podcasting this weekend, uh, you could have caught us on Twitter a little bit. So definitely interact with us there. We love that from our fans. So thank you so much. Anything from you CD? Nope. Enjoy. Wait for. Uh, excited for conference breakdowns this month and next month. We're uh, we're gonna get after it. We're doing research right now, and we'll get out. Hopefully, the best qual- best content we can give you this off season will be that. You know. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again.